We actually get this question quite a lot from agents that are moving to the area or buyers who are coming from out of state and think that the due diligence fee is a scam. <laughs> Welcome back to the North Carolina Real Estate Show. I'm Tiffany Weber, and I'm a real estate attorney in Mooresville, North Carolina, at Thomas & Weber. Uh, this is my husband, Ryan Weber. Thank oh. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Now, today's topic, any guesses? What is today's topic? I can guess pretty good because just... I came up with this topic. I bet it will be something around the difference in North Carolina real estate from other states. Yeah, so what should you know if you're coming Ooh. to North Carolina and you want to buy real estate. We actually get this question quite a lot from agents that are moving to the area or buyers who are coming from out of state and think that the due diligence fee is a scam, mm -hmm. that they're being scammed by the seller or mm -hmm. the seller's agent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got experience I with agree. the due diligence fee. It's a scam. But you don't agree with that. I know you don't. No, so I can define what this is. Okay. This is the price you pay the seller to take the house off the market for you to look at it, kick the tires a little bit and see if in fact it is what you want to follow through with your purchase. Mm -hmm. And it is refundable or not? It is not. You give the money, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And does it get applied to the purchase price at it closing? It does get applied. Yes, it does. Oh my gosh. I'm a regular old real estate You've person. You've been paying attention. Now, the due diligence fee is not the same as the due diligence period, no. which is common in a lot of other states. Sometimes it's called the examination period or the investigation period. Those are usually more often used in commercial deals. A lot of states call it the due diligence period, and it's the time you get to check out the property. Now, North Carolina has the fee associated with it. This is a negotiable fee. You can offer zero. It is up to the seller whether they want to accept your offer. What's or the not. highest due diligence fee you've seen? Because during COVID, you saw some. I saw the entire purchase price. In so was it just like as an investor my house. that was sick of losing hmm. and said, "I'm buying it no matter what." I don't so care. Will... Here's the cash up front. In North Carolina, we require a lawyer to conduct the closings. That's actually my second point. Nice. First was due diligence. Because in most places, Texas, yeah. uh, South Carolina, I believe also. All, all, most states. Most states is a title agency, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah. So title the company. title company will conduct the Like closing. in North Carolina, the title companies that sell the title policies, they can also do the closing on the transaction in other states. North Carolina requires an attorney to do the closing. Um, that's because we don't sell the insurance policy. So, you know, we're kind of like independent and we're able to, it's, it's North Carolina's way to try to protect the consumer. I'm not saying the consumer's not protected in the other states. It's just the way North Carolina views things. And we represent in um, almost all cases uh, or in the residential transaction, the buyer, the seller can obtain their own counsel, but North Carolina allows the buyer's counsel to, in a limited scope, prepare documents for the seller. And those are the deed, lien waiver, uh, marital status affidavit. And that's because those are the instruments that are required to deliver clear title to the buyer. And keeping in mind that the buyer's attorney is making sure the buyer gets clear title, it would make sense why the buyer's attorney can prepare those very important documents. The next thing that's different about North Carolina real estate, and it's the type of notice jurisdiction. I agree. We are uh, actually not a notice jurisdiction. We are a race jurisdiction, which mm -hmm. means that it is race a... judicata. It's a race to the register, register of deeds. deeds for us to record. And then once it's recorded, you get your keys and you can go into your new house. Yeah. So the, the order of that is money, recording, keys and checks to the seller and agents. The other reason that's important is it's possible that you've got an unsavory seller that's under contract to sell to two buyers. Well, whoever who's going to own the house, if that's the case, whoever records first. So that's ownership, lien priority, all of that. Last thing 
that is different and it has to do with marriage mm. any guesses oh i know this one spousal privilege <laughs> is is that kind of correct your spouse has to be on <laughs> your... do you know where you went wrong no <laughs> your spouse will be on the deed spousal privilege marital interest marital interest and you're on the right track spousal privilege is your right not to testify against your spouse oh but marital interest in north carolina if you are married and you buy a property whether the spouse is on the deed or not in north carolina your spouse gains a marital interest in your property unless they uh disclaim it in a couple different ways a prenup post up separation agreement free trader or you know divorcing because then you're not spouses anymore but if you don't have any of those documents that properly sever the marital interest in place and record it in the county where the property is located then your spouse has an interest in the property so when you sell the property spouse on the deed or not they have to sign with you to sell it because they have an interest in the property that they have to give away that really gets some people fired up mm -hmm. Especially if there happens when you've got someone's being shady, mm -hmm. trying to sell something and keep the proceeds hidden from their spouse. And they're like, well, she wasn't on the deed. I wasn't married when I bought it. Okay. Well, once you get married and you have a spouse, your spouse has an interest in those things that were not dealt with by prenup, postnup, separation agreement, free trader, et cetera. So they're like, well, I don't want her to know about the money. Well, she's got to sign all the, she's got to sign all the closing docs. Uh, well, that's not an exhaustive list of what's different about North Carolina real estate than other states, but those are the hot topics, and we'll leave it at that. Thank you, the Marketing Dude 44, for joining us today. I'm it was... glad it was a Bring a Friend Day, and I'm glad to be the uh, number one number one reviewer on reviewer. Apple Podcasts. <laughs> but thank you for joining us on this episode. It has been a delight, as always. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we'll see everybody on the next episode. <laughs>